Can you reduce high ferritin without donating blood? That's what you're going to learn today as I tell you about a patient who I helped lower his ferritin from 787 to 100 without therapeutic phlebotomy and at the same time reduce his CRP inflammation marker from 170 to 1. So my name is Dr. Tom Rafano from the Natural Medicine Clinic in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida and author of The Free Diet and I've had the opportunity to see over 100,000 patient visits over the last 38 years, most of the patients I see have gut and thyroid issues and abnormal ferritin levels are a common finding that I see. So this particular patient, 70 year old male came in feeling exhausted. He had hip replacement surgery two weeks prior and I'd helped him before get over his chronic digestive issues. He had gas, bloating, constipation and psoriasis. So I helped him get those better and he came back now just feeling very fatigued. So I ran a comprehensive health panel and it came back with ferritin levels of 787. An optimal range would be about 50 to 90 and his inflammation marker, the CRP, was 170.5 and that should be closer to one. So other things, he had high white blood count, high liver enzymes, low thyroid function. He had adrenal dysfunction, low DHEA, high cortisol, above optimal insulin levels, and he had iron deficiency anemia. So yes, he had high ferritin and he had low iron. The first thing is to find out what is causing it. You need to get the proper testing. Normal ranges of ferritin, depending on age in the lab, for women 15 to 150, men 30 to 400. Optimal ranges though are about 50 to 90 depending on other factors as well. It could be more, it could be less than this. So came up with an acronym for the causes of high ferritin because most people think high ferritin, I must have iron overload. Let me go donate blood. I can't eat any beef, can't take any vitamin C. It's just, it's, that's an issue in a small percentage of cases, iron overload. There are many other potential causes. So I came up with this acronym called LA5Is. L for liver disease, including fatty liver, which is so prevalent these days. A, alcohol use, so over two drinks a day or 14 a week. So people say, well, I, I only drink on weekends. Well, how many drinks do you have? Oh, like half a dozen or so. Oh, the whole weekend? No, like on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh, well, all right, there's your high ferritin. And the five I's. Insulin resistance is the most common cause of high ferritin, and that can include a number of symptoms. That's also known as metabolic syndrome. You have inflammation, you have infection, illness, including rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune conditions, hyperthyroidism, kidney disease, cancer. Yes, high ferritin can be an in indicative of cancer. And the last I, iron overload. That means from too much iron intake, cast iron cookware and grills, supplements with iron, transfusions, and hemochromatosis, which is a genetic condition that causes one to accumulate iron. So in step one of getting the proper testing, this is what I call my comprehensive health panel. And it includes CBC, comprehensive metabolic panel, lipids, TSH, now there's a line under there because this is typically what your doctor orders and nothing else. So you have to ask for each and every one of these things. Ferritin, not ferritin alone, which can be meaningless. It's ferritin, serum iron, percent saturation, and TIBC. This way you can tell if it's from iron overload or not. Then you have for inflammation, CRP, LDH, GGT, which is a marker of liver function, um, alcohol, excess alcohol consumption as well. And then insulin resistance marker is insulin, A1C, uric acid, other thyroid markers, free T4, free T3. This is the minimum I would suggest someone do to assess high ferritin. Other things I like to check to get more information. So for autoimmune, ANA, thyroid antibodies, Another thyroid marker, reverse T3, uh, adrenal function, DHEA, cortisol, other hormones, testosterone, estradiol, IGF-1, SHBG, and then some nutrients, B12, 
folate, vitamin D, homocysteine, a marker of inflammation, and urinalysis. So if someone has high saturation, over 45%, then they can also check for hemochromatosis DNA. Other functional root cause testing are for five main areas, deficiencies, toxins, infections, hormonal imbalance, and food reactions. Step two is diet. The diet I recommend and gave this patient, I call the free diet. It's a diet I came up with years ago when I had to figure out how to heal my autoimmune, Hashimoto's thyroid condition, rheumatoid arthritis, IBS, fatigue, and skin issues. So I resolved those issues and have since helped many patients do the same. I call it the free diet because it's free of not only gluten, but gluten grains, sugar yeast, dairy eggs, cereal legumes, nightshades, processed foods. And I'll put a link to the video at the end so that goes into more detail. And also I'll put a link below if you want a copy of the free diet phase one food chart sent to you. And the third step are proper supplements. So I gave this patient what I call the functional five. That's five foundational supplements. I find that most everyone needs that's multi fish oil, vitamin D with K magnesium and probiotic. And then for him, other gut support nutrients, curcumin for inflammation support, liver support supplement and vitamin C iron. Yes. He had high ferritin, almost 800. And he took vitamin C with iron because he had iron deficiency anemia and methylfolate B12, uh, thyroid and adrenal support he needed and some other nutrients that he required zinc E and CoQ10. So he came in four months later, he had more energy. He was feeling great. His blood test showed that his ferritin reduced from 787 to 100. His CRP inflammatory marker went from 170.5 to 1.6. His iron deficiency anemia was better. So his blood cell count normalized, his iron went up. Yes, his ferritin went down and his iron went up. His low iron went up to normal at the same time. His high liver enzymes went down to normal as did his high white blood count normalized. His testosterone went up from 18 to 343. His adrenal and thyroid function improved to normal and he was feeling great. So if you have high ferritin, don't assume it's from iron overload and run out and start donating blood. Get the proper testing first. Because if you find out the root causes and are provided the right solutions, I believe almost anyone can get better. Thanks for joining me today. Feel free to like and subscribe below. I'll put a link to the free diet phase one food chart if you'd like that. And I look forward to seeing you next time.